Series Kiribati. Well, here we are in the Central Pacific, 33 tiny atolls right on the equator in an ocean area half the size of Australia. But we're not just a tiny spot on the map. Kiribati is also home to 100,000 people and we have one of the highest birth rates in the world. As you can see, our islands are very small and narrow. They're also very low, only two to three meters above sea level. With so little land space, the ocean has always played an important part in our lives. And our ancestors were great sea navigators, traveling vast distances to our far-flung neighbors. Over many centuries, we have built up a lifestyle and traditions which are unique to our remote place in the Pacific. We've also evolved our own culture, which is unlike that of any other. And our unique dance, which expresses what we are as a people. But all that's under threat. All that's about to change. What we're now facing is a major threat, a threat to our very existence. As a result of global warming, we have climate change and sea level rise. Kiribati is one of the most vulnerable countries. We're at the front line and in most recent years, sea level rise has become a major issue for us. As the problem increases, life becomes harder for the people. What's happening here is, it's not something new now to the settlers in this place. Uh, of course, this is the high tide now. This is the spring, highest spring tide we have. And as you can see now, it covers the whole ground. But this is getting too much. More and more, we find people having to relocate to other places. The house on that side of the Maniaba used to be a family living there. But as you can see now, is swimming. The house is swimming now. They came to me. And they asked me that. They told me that they're going to leave and move to their relatives. But the, the kids are worrying. It's in their mind, and it's becoming part of their life. This worry of where would they be next year, the day after, or 15 years from now. Another major issue is the availability of fresh water. Apart from rainfall, we often have drought because it's not always very reliable. Underground water is a main source of supply. With sea level rise and more storms, these underground water resources are becoming salty. And in overcrowded South Tarawa, human-induced pollution is adding greatly to the problem. In this village, the Bikenikora, there is no longer a supply of fresh water. All the wells are affected, and without fresh water, there can be no life. The world doesn't seem to hear us, and still they, they are enjoying what they are doing uh, with this uh, gas and all that. And somebody are reaping the, the consequence. You know, as young people who will be leaders of tomorrow, you know, we're not just sitting around doing nothing. You know, we're trying to do something about this issue. Our first step is to help our people understand what is happening. And in this area of community awareness, young people are taking a very clear lead. When we first start the, our workshop, the people themselves are like they don't really believe that climate change is going to affect their, their lives. And also they really believe that God won't destroy our beautiful island. But after the explanation, some of them scared, but then... Others tell everyone that 
We're not going to move. We need to face this problem. So, what else can our small country do? Yes, we can gather together and plant mangroves to try and protect our coastal defences. But as we've found in the past, they don't always work. We can also build bigger and better sea walls. But we can't protect every island in this way. And we must also remember, the sea is always stronger than anything man can build. Some people think that migration to another country may be the answer. But it is not popular with the majority of our people. With migration, there comes the loss of language, the loss of culture, and the loss of what we are as a people. This is our home. This is our land. This is where we're born. And uh, this is where we will die. And, uh, but a natural death is what we are expecting. Not dying, swimming, and, and drowning, and all that. That's not the way our God wants us to, to end this life. Already, there are plans to increase the employability of our people for the overseas market through training in vocational skills so they can migrate with dignity and not become a burden on their hosts. But in terms of facing the wider challenge of climate change, we, as one of the smallest and poorest nations, cannot handle this issue alone. What's got to be understood is those countries that continue with business as usual are actually hurting those countries and the future of the young people. The young people are absolutely essential. They, they must change the attitude of, of the future generations. Um, we have to make our young people aware of their role that uh, one day they will become leaders and hopefully they will be able to do better than uh, the current uh, generation of leaders in looking after the planet. So, what is the future for our children and our children's children? Our young people are perhaps one of the happiest in the planet and uh, I think that's something that we should be very proud of. And I think it's uh, such a pity that they are enjoying life here but they, without their knowledge it's actually being destroyed from somewhere else. And I think that that, that is the, um, the, the extreme irony that those that are suffering most have made the least contribution to the, to the problem. And. Um, uh, as a leader, I, I do hope that the world community will listen to what we're saying because we're talking about young people. We're talking about real hum, human, human beings whose lives are at stake, whose future as a people are at stake. And um, once again, I appeal to the international community to not to continue to negotiate over it, but actually do something about it concrete. I hope somebody out there would listen to the cry of people of the islands. Eh? So how do we measure the welfare and future of these two young children against the wealth and power of nations? We call on the world leaders to put aside their domestic concerns. We call on the finest minds of the world to assist. We call on each and every one of us to accept responsibility as citizens of our global planet. Too much is at stake.